Okay, I think they say the proof is in the pudding, so we're going to see just how good these uh, tapers fit right here. I'm going to take the uh, MT2 that we made, and as I've said before, the purpose of this one is to uh, simply have a uh, dead center to go on that old uh, wood lathe I got out there in the shop that I use for de-rusting. So we're going to put a point on this first. Uh, just to make a dead center. Then we're going to take one of the MT3s and do the same thing on it, make a long, uh, a longer um, dead center. Uh, of course, the, the dead centers, the, the stock ones, aren't that long. My tail stock has a three inch travel on it. And as wide as my carriage is, uh, sometimes that dead center doesn't quite reach over doesn't reach the piece without totally extending the tailstock. So, but we're gonna, I've got the uh, MT5 to MT3 adapter in, and this is a three to a two. And now we'll put the two that we made in. And I'm just gonna seat those in, just easily seat them in. I've got the, uh, compound set at 30 degrees that'll give us the 60 degree compound angle and I'm going to turn this down I won't have to go in enough uh, to get past this uh, center drill that we put in there I've got the lathe in reverse A few more RPM there. So far, everything is holding fine. All right, I'm down where I'm working now on the, uh, uh, where I drilled the center in there. So it's gonna take a couple of passes. Uh, probably should have faced that off to begin with. I don't have my tool post tight enough, okay. Okay, I think I'm about ready to make a couple final passes on here. All right, I think that's a good dead center to use out there. I'll get the other one set up and we'll turn it. All right, I've got one of the MT3s that we made. Uh, in the headstock now and I've gone ahead and faced off this end down here to take care of the uh, where we had the center drilled in there so I'm going to do the same process on this I'm going to still got it set at the 30 degrees to give us a 60 degree compound uh, and I'm going to turn this point on here one thing I will mention too when cutting taper on this uh, uh, on this Morse taper that's in there, I'm only cutting on the inward direction. If I tried to cut coming out, which normally you can do with a piece held in a chuck or a collet, but with it held uh, by a taper here, uh, cutting on the way out would uh, would 
tend to pull the taper out of the holder. So I'm only cutting on the inside, uh, the inward stroke. and it will cut a whole lot better on that side if I put the lathe in reverse. Wonder I didn't chip that, uh, that insert right there, but uh, it looks okay. This should cut a whole lot better now. I'm taking a 60 thousandths cut each time, which is 30 thousandths on each side. Run out of compound again. All right, this should be the final cut here once I get set back up. And just because I can, and it's sitting right here, I'm gonna go ahead and polish that. All right, I've got one more I want to cut on this video. I'll get set up for that. Uh, we're going to actually do some turning on it and cutting threads. On this MT3 that we cut, what I want to do on the end of this is turn this down to a half inch. And then we're going to put some threads on here. I've got a chuck that is the type of chuck that as you thread it on, that's what closes the jaw. It's an old Craftsman one. Actually, it's new old stock. I found it in a box of stuff that was being thrown out. Uh, but it, uh, it's a half inch chuck. It's the same type of chuck I've got on my old Power King uh, uh, drill press from 1941. And it works real good on that. So I'm going to turn this down, thread it on here to use also in the lathe. Uh, for smaller bits. Like I say, it's a half inch chuck. Uh, I'll tell you what, stand by and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, this is what the chuck looks like. And this is on just a threaded stud right now that I actually use it uh, occasionally in the mill to hold small bits. But as you tighten it down on the threads, it closes the jaws on there. And size wise it is considerably this is the normal chuck that I use uh, in the lathe and this is this one uh, the one we're going to work for now. So it's considerably smaller and it will tighten up enough to hold the, the very small bits as well. 
Now, if I, in, if I put our taper directly in that M, uh, five to three adapter, I've got the compound turned around now to what the angle would be to cut the threads. I had a suspicion on this. The threads need to be an inch and three quarters, which is back here. Let me see if I can get you in a little tighter. Back here where this mark is. And this is all the travel I have on my uh, cross slide. If I took the stop off down here, I've got to stop, I could get about another quarter of an inch, but I'm coming up almost an inch short. So what I've got, and I didn't even know they made these until I went looking for them, but this is an MT3 to an MT3, which is basically just an extension. And it's got a tang on it. Now we've got plenty of travel now. I'll pull my tail stock up and Lock that down in place so we got plenty of support. We'll zero out right there. And I know I want an inch and three quarters. So I'm going to go about 1.8. And set my, set my stop right there. All right, I'm going to make a few turns on this, and then we'll start measuring. All right, we're looking for half inch on this, just a little under. We're currently at 9.37, so I'm going to set a target dimension on the DRO. 0.5 minus our 937. So we got 437 thousandths to go. Uh, I'll make a few passes and then I'll bring you back. Okay, I think we're ready to get a measurement now. Make a final cut. It's 520. So we got about 20 more thousandths to go. The DRO is uh, on our target showing 21. So we're, uh, we're cutting right in line. And that was taking 60 thousandths at the time. So this should be our final dimension here. I move the carriage stop out of the way, then we'll put a little uh, chamfer on this. All right, I'm ready to get the change gears in now and get set up to cut our threads. Before I put the change gears in, what I want to do is go ahead and cut a little bit of thread relief. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this is was totally not planned, but right here is exactly the reason I wanted to cut the, that. Uh, longer MT3 dead center. I've got the live center in here now. And see what happens? My quick change tool post block is hitting the, uh, the live center before the tool ever reaches. I want to keep that suspended there. If I was to put a regular length uh, uh, dead center in there, I would have to extend my tailstock out the full length, even if it would reach. But with this longer one, I'm 
Now I can just simply pull that up there. It's much thinner. May even one day make one of these like one Mr. Pete showed a while back where half of it is, uh, uh, has been milled away uh, to give even more clearance there. So let's see if we can get in there now and cut just a little bit of thread release. I'm letting this uh, automatic feed in there. And that should be plenty of relief right there. All right, now we'll get the change gears in. I've got the change gears in now, and I've made a pass to be sure I'm uh, at the correct uh, threads per inch, which in this case is 20. This is a half inch 20, which of course is a fine thread. So now we're going to proceed to cutting our threads. All right, sorry about not getting the last few passes uh, on the threading on video. I thought I'd hit the record button, but I hadn't. But anyhow, I've got it turned down, got the threads cleaned up. Uh, chuck fits on there fine now. Good, nice fit. If you'll watch the way the end of this chuck works. The threads on, the jaws are closing down on the inside. They'll become visible. And that will close down and hold the smallest bit that I've got, I'm sure. So I'm going to go back over to the workbench and we're going to recap this entire video series. Okay, I think we're ready to bring this video to a, to a close. Uh, as a matter of fact, this entire series. And before I do, I want to uh, throw out a big thank you to uh, all my viewers, subscribers. This uh, uh, series of videos have been three so far. Uh, first was making the, uh, the matching dovetails. Secondly was uh, putting the uh, gib into the dovetails. And third, making the using the dovetail block uh, to make the tailstock offset by installing an MT3 in this end, uh, machining and hardening a point for this end, <clears throat> and putting a, uh, an adjustment on there, something to advance it out with. But those three videos so far have been one of the most successful series uh, I've ever recorded. As a matter of fact, uh, it's well over 36,000 views right now on those three videos with the making the, the uh, uh, dovetail block accounting for 30,000 of those views. But uh, I really appreciate it. And in the last video where I put these pieces together and, and made our final product, I mentioned about a, uh, taking a micrometer apart to use a micro adjust over here or what it was called to try to uh, to find just the thimble and the uh, the parts, basically an entire mic uh, micrometer except for the frame. I didn't know what to refer to it. Got a lot of very good comments back. Uh, several folks suggested using a uh, death mic, cutting off one side of it, drilling the other side, mounting it in there, which would have been ideal. That would have been my next choice. Uh, if I hadn't found what I'll show you in just a second. But a lot of people responded and said what I was looking for was called a micrometer head. And I guess that's the uh, key to finding stuff sometime on eBay is, is knowing what to search for. So I got to looking for micrometer heads. The mail just ran, and this was in it. 
This is a Starrett number 463. Came with the mount, which will, I've already checked it at a bolt right where this one is. The only thing I need to do is uh, either shorten my bolt or lengthen the depth of the threads in there. Found this on eBay for $6. Uh, I think a very good deal. So I'm going to mount that on. But in this video, what you saw me do was take the uh, MT2 that we had turned, put a point on it to make a dead center for the, uh, uh, for the old de-rust and lathe out under the shelter. Also, took this one, made a longer than normal dead center, about an inch longer. Uh, just a utility item. And then we just finished taking another one of the MT3s we turned and making this uh, chuck holder. This will go directly into the tailstock, uh, minimum overhead. Uh, again, I've got this piece that would have gone into chuck and or gone in this chuck and I could have loaded that in the other chuck, but that would have stuck it way out there too far. This turns out very compact. So, so far, I'm very pleased with this tool and the outcome of it, uh, of what I've been able to produce. And as, as I said earlier, this tool is not just for uh, turning uh, empties, uh, Morse tapers. Harold, I hope I said that right for you. But uh, it's Morse, not Morris. But it's, it's worked extremely well for that. And I'm going to, in the next video, I'm going to use another one of these that I turned off camera. And we're going to make a, we're going to do another project. It'll probably not be in this video series or in this playlist. But we're going to take this piece of stock right here and make a, in this one, and make a die guide. Uh, most of you, a lot of you have already seen the videos where folks are making uh, uh, die followers to go in their chucks when they're cutting threads uh, uh, with dies. This one's going to be a little bit different. This one is going to be to use the hex dies. And before anybody tells me that hex dies are just for restoring threads, yes, I understand that, know that, but uh, I've found anything less than a half inch, uh, they work just fine for cutting new threads. So come back and watch how we make this to hold a heck, one inch hex thread, a uh, hex die, and mount it onto this. Again, thank you so much for all the feedback uh, on this tool and developing this tool and all your views and wonderful comments. Take care and I'll see you on the next video.